welcome to Not Your Average Farm Shop, the first episode of The Farm's brand new podcast. I'm here with Charlie Wells, who is the founder of The Farm, and I'm very excited to be speaking to her today a little bit about what brought The Farm about, how it's gone from, uh, you know, just a small fruit farm when you took it over in 2019, and what makes the farm shop more than average. So, Charlie, hello. It's hello. lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. Um, as we've discussed, as is based around the whole name of this podcast, Not Your Average Farm Shop, what is it that you think makes the farm more than average? I think probably it's what we do as a business for the community and also our ethos kind of nurture feed discover what is it that we do that's a little bit different compared to what other people do um i mean a huge part of it is sustainability um which some farm shops are a little bit behind with um i think our social media also is very different Uh, not many farm shops will be doing podcasts um it's a new adventure it's yeah um, like it's just being that almost like quirky um so it covers all different demographics and people from kind of 19 to 70. Um, so yeah, that's why I think we're we're a bit different. And our offering, like the, the products that we choose, um, the suppliers that we work with. Definitely, so, yeah. yeah. I'd say, because I've been here for three years, nearly, well, I think it is three years now. Yeah. And to me, it always seems like there's something else, something new going on. Yeah. I think I'm probably a little bit impatient with things like that. And I think, or more passionate maybe, that's probably a better word. Um, Even when we do something, I'm always thinking of the next thing that we need to do. So, I mean, you know, like first-handedly that we change things all the time, don't we? 100%. There's something changes every single month, whether it's a display or whether it's a room that we change or whether Marek gets in and builds things or my dad built something outside, like just so we can be that fresh and different and keep, yeah, keeping it looking fresh. So people are like, oh, that's new. Oh, they're, they're investing in it. So yeah, that's why. I remember I'd go away to uni and then come back after a few months and then a whole section had changed. Yeah. So yeah, definitely <laughs> keeping people on their toes. <laughs> but has it always, always been... A dream of yours to have a farm shop like did you always know from a young age that this is something that you wanted to do what yeah. was the inspiration for it so I would say it wasn't necessarily a farm shop as such but I really knew I wanted to be in like food and hospitality um so my mum and dad when we were younger I was brought up in a hotel um, my parents had a hotel in Stratford called the Straff Eden um, and my mum ran it for 19 years two girls as well so she literally I mean she went back to work the day after she had my sister um and me I think it was like a week later but she had the hotel it was open pretty much 50 weeks of the year um the the only two weeks off we had it was at Christmas and that was the only time that my family all really got together um because my dad was always working away um so I'd say my mum was my inspiration for being in hospitality because she just was incredible having two young kids and also running a hotel that was pretty much 24-7 operation. Um, And then when I was 12 years old, my parents were like, you need to go and get a job, which I don't think many people at 12 would say that they go and get jobs. But I started working in a tea room, so tea garden down in Stratford by the river, um, some people might know it, it was um, the Riverside Tea Garden and my first boss was called Sue Newman and I worked there from, 20, from 12 until 24 and it was a summer job so I was there for ages and I pretty much was running the cafe when I was about 15, 16. Um, if it rained we didn't open, it was very much all outdoors, the kitchen was her little kitchen um, and she taught me some really amazing things about hospitality and working in the food industry um she sadly passed away during lockdown so she had a one in a million brain tumor um and yeah that during lockdown that was actually quite hard because she was pretty much like a role model for me um 
And then when I was at university, did business management and marketing. And my dissertation at the time was to do a business plan for something that we, or the students there, thought would work. Um, and I actually did a business plan that was based on something that I really did want to do, um, which was essentially, it was initially Nourish, um, but it was more of a street food van. So it was a much smaller scale. Um, but my lecturers were like, you need to do this. And it was all about zero waste, working with, there was a place in Bristol called Skitchen. Yeah. Which was, yeah, which I think we've spoken zero about Zero waste. Yeah. yeah. So they collect any food waste from any of the restaurants and turn it into food. And it was all about how we could keep food waste down, what we could like change it into. Um, and then from that, built up more ideas. And then when they said to, when I, when I got my dissertation results, I got the highest in the year, which I was really proud of because I'm not massively like academic. Um, and they published it at uni. So it was one of those things that I was like, this must be like, okay. Um, and then, yeah, from that, I went traveling and then spoke to dad and said that there's this opportunity come up and should we invest in it? And it was a fruit farm and it was back when the Freemans had it. Um, and it was derelict. It was literally falling apart and it, there had been like fires in some of the areas. There was rats, there was rot, like rotten, there was asbestos. It was just absolutely falling apart. But we saw it as an opportunity. So we invested in it without any planning. So we didn't have any planning permission on the whole site. Um, and then thought, right, let's let's do this business plan and let's make it into reality. So yeah, wow. and from there, so I've been in, like, in food since, well, my whole life pretty much. I had no idea about a lot of that with your mum when yeah. you were younger, how that's obviously fed quite a lot into what you do now. Yeah. But would you say that her and also Sue, as yeah. women like in business and that sort of environment have inspired you in yeah. that way as well? Because a lot of the team here are women. Is that something that's important to yeah, you as massively. well? Yeah, uh, Hugely, um, especially in the farm industry. Um, when I sometimes go to farming events the majority of people are males and also you def I'm sure I've spoken to you about this but obviously having the name Charlie Wells the I normally get any what at least one email a day saying mister and yeah. or people will call up and say could they speak to me and say oh he's he's expecting my call well no <laughs> Because it, it, and I do actually find that really frustrating. And it's one of those things that it just puts things into perspective that there's not enough women in this industry, especially farm food. I think there's an absolute rise in hospitality. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've got girlfriends that run this amazing place called Bobby's in Stratford. That's three girls that run that. Um, I've got another friend that, that Rachel Hawkins, she has pubs and bars and she's been that I used to work in when I was younger she's been an absolute inspiration like she's just incredible with what she does um so yeah I would definitely say that yeah no it's lovely it's really nice to have that um you know to build women up like not just at the farm but locally in Stratford as well I think yeah. that's really lovely yeah um what would you say is your favorite thing about the farm what do you love about it like from what you've built from you know, back in 2019 to now, is that yeah. a favourite thing? Do you, I think one of my favourite things would probably be the relationships with suppliers um, and building on that. So, say, a couple of years ago, this is during lockdown, we, i sorry, it was my sister's birthday, and I ordered six cookies from the Cookie Cottage, where she was just an Instagram page. She, I think she only had about 150 followers or something, and bought these cookies for my sister they got delivered um and we had them and we were like these are absolutely amazing this is fantastic and I messaged her and said any chance you would like to supply to the farm she was like this is a dream come true like I absolutely love the farm I would love to and I think we ordered something like 60 to begin with and they absolutely flew like they sold so quickly 
and within a couple of weeks I think her order went from 60 to something like 700 That's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah which is just unbelievable and it was quite short but she then left her like Monday to Friday job started baking the cookies full time then started baking them in our cookery school because her kitchen at home wasn't big enough for the orders that we were then asking for she's now opened up her own shop in Stratford and is looking for another unit elsewhere and this has all happened within the space of kind of 18 months same again with the brownies and Love Lane brownies. She, I believe, does it full time or has dropped her hours down at her like Monday to Friday job down to something like two days because her orders here and the markets that she does are so high. And that's, I really enjoy seeing that and hopefully building people's brands with them or their dreams with them because you don't get that when you work with the bigger suppliers. So, like some of our biggest suppliers, we're actually small orders for them. So, when you work with smaller independents, it's much more personal, and you see it. You see them grow, as well as you growing as well. And that I really love that. I think that that really expresses like community and emphasizes on like if, when you when you work together, better things happen. So. Yeah, I really enjoy that side of it. And also just like watching the team grow as well. Like that's really nice because say that you've been you've been here three years. Like I hope that's a good sign to people that it's like you've been here three years and the majority of the team have been here quite a while. So yeah, that's also really nice. Yeah, sort of getting to see people's journeys like, yeah, is quite nice. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um with as you were setting up um back in 2019 did you ever have any doubts about whether you'd be able to do it and what's been the hardest part I imagine it's quite ongoing like yeah. a lot of challenges that come up you know yeah. at all times but has there been a standout difficulty obviously lockdown was a bit of a bump in the road but yeah um I mean I would say our first year of trading pre-covid so we went into lockdown when we were 11 months old so even before this um Obviously, the first year is always tough, but we we were working with another family, and we they we both went separate ways, and the Wells family decided to make like have the farm completely. Um, that was huge, like that was a massive change because it, the original structure was not that I was going to be MD at twenty six, twenty five, twenty six. So that was quite hard because going for, like it's it's a big company like we've got forty five staff members and being twenty six and looking after that amount of staff it was so, it was really quite a shock. Um, but as Dad and I said, like we're going to do it and we're we'll like do our absolute hardest and work super hard and. Um, keep pushing through and we did and I feel like the outcome's been really great um and I think I've done I actually feel like I've done myself proud with what with not knowing what I what I had to do basically in the first year to now being like I've got a pretty good guess on how to do this now so yeah that was the biggest challenge to begin with and then obviously the pandemic was a given like that was just I remember I remember doing um the Instagram video saying that we were closing and it was just before Mother's Day and we had 170 people booked in which was our biggest booking we'd ever done and and the head chef at the time had prepped so much beautiful food like tuna sashimi and all sorts and we'd spent quite a lot of money and they were like oh three weeks and we were like oh we'll put it in the freezer it'll be fine and then obviously it then it got extended but I remember being in Nourish and doing the video thinking we're 11 months old and we are about to close the doors for three weeks what on earth um but luckily we didn't close that amount of time we just built the online website changed the layout of the shop and reopened and then was open for the foreseeable <laughs> It was such a crazy time, wasn't it? It feels like, a, it was, honestly feels like a blur now. No, it does, definitely. Do you have any regrets about the sacrifices that you had to make at 26? Like maybe 
personally the fact that you had to invest so much in this this business and obviously it's a commitment which means that you needed to be here and be in it wholeheartedly did you ever have sort of any niggling thing that was like oh, you know yeah. wishing you could be doing something else I think for anyone and this isn't just my age but I think it's just getting that work-life balance and def- I definitely didn't have a work-life balance at all um up until I would say like November last year um so there's a lot of things that I would cancel with friends and not go to or just be too tired to or even exercising like I love exercising and I was doing it six days a week and I it just I just was too tired to be doing that um so yeah that was probably the biggest that was a big sacrifice but also on the flip side I've got such a great support network around me my friends are always so supportive um and family as well so everybody everybody gets it it's not like they're thinking oh god what's she up what's she doing like that's that's really silly um and then obviously yeah that I think it's just having that network around me and support from the family so yeah there's no there's definitely no regrets but I would say that I'm a lot more relaxed and not as stressed in work finding that work-life balance and that was then from meeting Max so that's helped massively and just doing things at the weekends instead of thinking that I have to be here and the, the whole business is like going to go into a meltdown because it's not because all you guys are fantastic and it's not going to make a difference if I'm not here at the weekends really <laughs> I can understand why you'd feel like that though if it's been so much a part of you then yeah yeah you want to be there for every moment yeah but you've also been doing yoga haven't you the yoga training yeah. so can you sort of say yeah. a little bit about that so that was something that I really wanted to do even before starting this but it was always just like a thought like oh that'd be great if I could do my yoga teach training um not necessarily to teach but just to better my own practice so that started in May I think I started in May yeah um and then did like that intensive 10 days in Greece where I was doing 10 hours a day of yoga um it was so funny I was like how was your retreat I was like it was not a retreat it was not (laughs) but it was but it was the the 10 hours a day that I was in that room practicing I honestly in the nicest way possible didn't think of the farm because I couldn't I had to just keep practicing these sequences and all and the the language and stuff so yeah being able to do that and enjoy it and do one weekend a month in London until November when I do my exam I'm so grateful that that I've been able to book that now because it's really given me like a new not like a sense of purpose but it's nice to focus on something a little bit different and almost like relearn again, which I've really missed learning new things. Even though I learn, I learn every day something new here, but this is something completely different to the farm. So, yeah, that's been fantastic. Do you think it's helped with how you run the farm as well? Massively. So it teaches you so many different ways, like how to when you teach how to speak in front of people. Um, how to pace yourself and just think inwards and be present and it sounds quite spiritual but that's like that's very much me and how I like to then portray that onto the staff and bring that kind of energy to the farm so I would say it's helped with my stress levels it's helped with the way that I then potentially think about things and how I deal with stuff here um and also how I identify that in this like staff members too yeah I think it can be quite underrated sometimes wellness is a general concept it can be like all a bit wishy-washy and not necessarily anything that tangible but I think it definitely is yeah important me and you are on the same page with that aren't we like we very much think it brings something to the table but I would then say there's a few team members that are a bit like that's like hocus pocus but it I think the fact of just being open-minded, whether it's a bit of hocus-pocus or it's spiritual, that's the main thing, is you just need to be a bit open-minded. And yeah, that for me is... Completely. Yeah. Because yeah. we're trying to bring back our Wellness Wednesdays as well, aren't we? Yeah. We to create a bit of a community with people, Definitely. you know, that work here and then also 
branching out a little bit into you know the local village and yeah. surrounding area so yeah. that's definitely something that we're keen to definitely make a bit of a hub here at the farm and um, what would you say would be your top piece of advice like given all your experience um you know going through this journey with the farm like to someone looking to do a similar thing like in yeah. either business or in a like wellness food lifestyle yeah hospitality space I think my the number one thing that I keep saying to myself and to staff members is trial and error so I would just recommend going for it and taking that risk if it doesn't work out you have given it a go and you've learned from that so it's like you you can't expect for something to go right every single time because then you'll never learn um and when you learn from something that you either do it better or you try something new or it's just yeah trial and error definitely like we didn't know whether an online website was going to work luckily it did but like it could have flopped really um we tried new products in the store before they haven't worked out we now know that that doesn't work say the fish counter we tried four times that fish counter to work we tried we had amazing concessions in but the footfall and the fact the product is literally a 24 hour product it just didn't work it was just one of those things the, the waste was just crazy for, for the concessions and it's not fair to put people under that pressure to say like you've got to we've got to be here you're under contract you've got to do that if a business is not succeeding then there's no point to it or the idea isn't succeeding like we've, you've just got to nip it in the bud and try something new we then tried packet fish that didn't really work so it's just yeah it's not that it's failed it's just that we it doesn't work for us right now yeah so. just moving quickly and learning from it exactly. Like exactly there's a podcast that i listen to called how to fail which i love oh, yeah. which is really really good just about normalizing failure and that you know ultimately that makes you successful yeah i think it's a, i think it needs to be taught more um i don't think that i don't think it really helps though when you're a kid and say I mean I'm quite sporty but say you like lose in sports there needs to be more of like a team thing about it like you haven't like you haven't lost it's the it's the like taking part that's the main thing but yeah I think it needs to stem from like really young and then hopefully yeah. it will yeah and it's not like you personally are a failure no. it's just it's it didn't part work of the out. Yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> um just quickly before I go on to some quick fire questions, yeah. what would you say are your future ambitions and visions for the farm? So definitely opening some form of well-being space. That would be the next dream. So have it hopefully like on site, that would be amazing. Um, some sort of gym or some sort of spin studio um also beauty so like either holistic massages or facials nails anything like that that just really makes this more of a destination that would be the next goal definitely i also wouldn't rule out a garden center but that's i think i don't know if, if my brain can cope with like that capacity of stuff as well no it's just sort <laughs> of yeah my stress level yeah. it's not my brain just yeah. like it's probably like you've got so many different ideas yeah. that you just go in any direction. But yeah, it's the right sort of environment for yeah. garden centre. So exactly, it suits it, doesn't it? Yeah, who knows. <laughs> um, okay, we'll move on to some fun quick fire questions now then. Um, so just the first thing that springs to mind, what would you say is your most memorable moment at the farm? So the flood. Do you remember the flood? The flood, yeah. yes. Yeah, I don't think I was here, but oh, I do remember it, seeing the pictures. Yeah, for something that was so horrific and such a bad thing to happen like we literally on the 16th of august two years ago i remember because it's my parents wedding anniversary um we got completely flooded out so the whole the whole of the shop the cookery school nourished the butchered was an inch underwater which doesn't sound like that much water but it is when it's a like a property but we managed to reopen within 24 hours and that was because the, uh, every single team member got involved in the cleaning and everybody had a broom and they were dusting, they were deep cleaning and it was just like 
an unintentional great team building day. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember we did, I think it was like me, Ema and Anne did a TikTok or like some sort of video and somebody messaged us saying like, how on earth are you still smiling that you've been, you've been fl- flooded out, all of you are all laughing. I was like, this is, you just got to turn a negative into a positive there. So that was, that was very memorable yeah. for sure. It's like, this is the spirit of the farm, we just crack yeah, on with it. Yeah. yeah, I remember seeing that, I think there was, you know, you'd done some music or whatever, like with the little... Yeah, with our brooms, brooms and mops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looked quite fun, really. But... I'm not too sure how good our dancing was, but it worked. It was great, it was great. <laughs> um, I guess this next question, it could be seen as the same, like with the flood, and it obviously turned into more of a positive, but other than that, what would you say your biggest nightmare moment has been? Um... COVID and I know that sounds like a cliche to say that because I feel like everybody would say that that was definitely like nobody plans for that you only see it in films don't you where there's like a global pandemic and you think that's actually happened like it's so strange but we all pulled through so well and considering we were only 11 months old it was one of the like best things for the business because as I don't want that to sound strange because it obviously was a terrible thing but it really brought the team together everybody got stuck in um it put the farm on the map because we were an essential shop um and I just think it really brought the community together especially doing the picnic circles which was just like the most rewarding thing I felt like it was so beautiful seeing families meet be safe, be secure, and just be in a nice environment. And I thought it was really strange, though, that the weather was just the most beautiful summer we possibly have ever had in the UK. So everybody managed to enjoy it outside and, like, socially distanced. So, yeah, that was the biggest nightmare. But also, at the same time, it it was really lovely being able to be open and see people. Um, We felt very lucky then. I think, um, yeah, take it for granted. No, we didn't take it for granted, but it was just, like, quite an honour being able to be open. Mm, completely, yeah. I remember as well doing all the orders, that having what felt like a production yeah. line of all the boxes, doing the fruit and veg, yeah. and, and putting that together for people, and, yeah, obviously knowing that you were supplying people with their food yeah. was quite a... Yeah, it was humbling. nice. Yeah, it was very humbling. And I think, especially when it was to, like, the older generation and the care homes that was really quite a nice thing to be doing. I mean, that production kitchen was, uh, that production area was like where the homeware is now and where the bakery was. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Just that's... an example of how much it all changes. Yeah, how it changes so quickly. I know. Thank God for Marek and Dad. I know. And the builders. I know. <laughs> what would you say is your favourite product at the moment in the shop? Favourite product at the moment is... I'm Apart not... from carrots and hummus. Oh, God. God, I'm obsessed. Um, I would say it's what it's something from Mahalo, which is our, one of our new suppliers because they're so great. Um, the hot sauces, and I don't, actually don't know which hot sauce I choose. I do really like the trodden black, the beetroot one is amazing. Um, or the yeah, trodden black actually because they've got pineapple one too, which is so good. But yeah, the, the, I mean our hot sauce collection is pretty crazy. But that shelving unit is quite impressive, isn't yeah. it? And pineapple sounds good for summer. Yeah, it's summery. It sauce. is with your greens or with your barbecue. Like it's great. So yeah, Mahalo, great supplier, small independent as well. Favorite product, Trotter Black, which is a really, really small maker in Scotland somewhere that has to piggyback on the back of somebody else's delivery because they're so small. It's great. It's great, isn't it? How you can support yeah. people. Really yeah. Good. yeah. If you weren't at the farm, what would you be doing? (laughs) So there's two, can I say two things? Of course, yeah. yeah. So my my spirit home is Sri Lanka. So I reckon I would probably be, I, I think I probably would have built by now a boutique hostel in Sri Lanka. That would be my dream. But it's just like, I love that place so much. Um, or, If I was going down the corporate route, which which I don't really know if that's me or not, but doing marketing for like a big sports brand like Nike or Adidas or something like that, that'd be really cool. Do you feel the conflict then between the corporate and the 
you know, just going off somewhere and yeah. setting up something from scratch? Is that quite a big... Yeah, def- I would say so. Um, I think probably watching Dad in not a massive corporate company when he was younger, um, but him being away when he was and then watching mum almost like our family business I went down the family business route not the like dad working with Disney and stuff like that like it wasn't really that route that I thought "Mm, I want to do that um but then I look at some of my friends in corporates I think that's great like they've got so many great opportunities but I do like the idea of being in Sri Lanka and having a hostel and like having maybe a mango farm that would be a mango farm yeah that would be great but I'm thinking a little bit I'm being probably a bit eccentric there so is that why mango is called mango yeah because you love yeah. them <laughs> honestly that? yeah if I can't have a mango farm I'm just going to call my puppy mango have a dog called mango is. yeah oh, no because your dad also is quite into scuba diving isn't he like you yeah. all that travelling and yeah that's my sister and I are so lucky that we've managed to explore some incredible places because of dad's doing his diving so yeah that's I think that's where we've got our travel bug though like we absolutely love being in other countries and exploring and backpacking and being in hostels or being on like bed sets because it's just such a different way of life and it's different cultures and I feel like it just helps you grow as a person and it makes you just more in tune with different people and individuals when you learn more about like how they live so, yeah, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, though. It's just fantastic. Everybody needs to go there. <laughs> it's the perspective as well with travel, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've never been to Sri Lanka, but it looks beautiful. Like, with the elephants yeah. and everything. It yeah, the amazing. people are very humble. Um, I think it's because of their, them being, um, having the, the tsunami, Boxing Day tsunami. Um, so they're just incredible people. So that's what really made it for me was the people and the food. The food is absolutely incredible. I bet it'd be so tasty. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think whatever sort of area you work in, like whether it is corporate or, you know, on a smaller level, you can like, make a positive difference in whatever you do. So, Definitely. Yeah, it's just committing to that. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is one thing that not many people would know about you or the farm? I feel like when I tell people about what this looked like when we first started, I think people thought that this has been established for a really long time, but say those photos that I've had printed, it's, everyone's like, what? So I think probably the fact that it was built, it was built by the family, or like developed by the family, um, and that Marek's been here since day one, and it was pretty much like five people that completed it. So but about me, oh, what about, I was a rower. I did rowing and I rowed like, for county. Was that in Stratford, like at the road? Yeah, road? so Stratford up in Avon and then, um, yeah, for West Midlands. Nice. Did you win anything? Yeah, yeah quite a lot. Quite, good, <laughs> quite, yeah, a good good, quite a good rower. Um, yeah, my dad was my coach. Did yeah. he do it as well? Does yeah, he, he, he used to row at uni um, and then he rode at Stratford as well. So we, I literally trained six days a week, relentless. Wow. Yeah, 7 a.m. in the morning until 7 p.m. at night and then school in the middle I did not know that that was a yeah. good one that was a good, that was a good one <laughs> yeah um, so as part of our wellness Wednesdays that we're relaunching and just the idea of you know making the farm a wellness hub in general um, we're going to be asking guests like you and other people as well for some words of wisdom so what is one thing that you do for yourself every day to live well I would say yoga yeah um Loads of people think that yoga is just about flexibility and like stretching, and it yeah, there's definitely parts of it where there is, but for for me, um, it's also about like grounding. And say I've had a really manic day here, it, if I do a practice, I it just it's like focuses me completely on being present and just like bringing myself back down to earth and not being so like, oh, look, we need to get this done, we need to do this. Like, I think, yeah, that I would recommend everyone, any age, doing some sort of meditation or yoga practice because I think people underestimate it. I think that don't, you can't knock it until you've tried it. So give it a go. Um, there's a yoga school 
coming at the farm every Thursday for six weeks and it's for everybody all different levels um and it's just so that people can like dabble in different classes and see if it's for them or not um but I would if I don't do some sort of practice a day whether it's yoga or some form of exercise like pilates or even a walk around the river with mango I, I get a little bit like irate I think that I'm like not I, think, I don't think I've done much, even though a day at the farm is a lot. Um, so, yeah, doing some sort of movement, yoga, meditation, just to quiet the mind, like, that is my number one thing. I relate to sure. that so much. Yeah. Even just walks. It's just moving up, being in the fresh air and being outside as well. There's it, quite a few things there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it all kind of comes back to the same thing, doesn't it? But with the meditation as well, like, just, again, it just... I can see that people would roll their eyes at it and think it's yeah. a bit that off, but it's amazing what just a few minutes sometimes can do. Massively. Just, you know, you open your eyes and you're like, okay, I'm yeah. glad I did that. Yeah, it re- it puts things into perspective. I think that's what it is. Is it? Sometimes it's quite nice to feel, like, small. I know that sounds strange, but, like, there are so many big things going on in the world that whatever's happened that day is not the biggest thing do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it, it, I just think it makes, it grounds you again and makes you realise that there's loads of stuff going on, you're not alone, like, relax, calm down, be present, and it just really works for me. And there's loads of free ones that you can listen to, so, yeah. Yeah, I find that as well with travel, like, that it massively just makes you sit back from your life, and, yeah, yeah kind for of, sure. So it's probably quite good getting away like sometimes from the farm so you can come back refreshed I yes guess, and just think yeah exactly exactly yeah what is our last question what is one song in the spirit of wellness wednesday and wellness in general that yeah. you would like one song that you would add to our playlist um it would be right now it would be fred again his new song jungle it's pretty like crazy but it gets you really like Ooh. yeah so, <laughs> Ooh. so I mean I might play it at the end of today on like for the staff because I just think he's so good and he makes everything better so yeah Fred again jungle that would be my new playlist song nice one well thank you very much for your time speaking to me today it's been really good to hear a little bit more about the story of the farm and I hope that everybody listening enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed speaking to Charlie and um, yeah and we'll have our next episode coming soon so Brilliant. thank you thank you very much if you'd like to keep up to date with everything going on at the farm you can give us a follow on Instagram at the farm Stratford if you'd like to send us a voice note you can do so by emailing hello at the farm stratford.co.uk not your average farm shop is brought to you by the farm stratford